It was a routine ultrasound that let the parents and doctors of tiny Marcus Suzuki Cesar know this was not going to be a straightforward entry into the world. They had the consult with the OBG one right after. And that's when I found out that um, they had detected, they, they saw a bump in the ultrasound on his lower back. And they said that it was spina bifida. Spina bifida is a birth defect, an incomplete closing of the backbone and membranes around the spinal column. In Marcus's case, part of his spinal column had slipped out. What he has is a lipomeningocele, so he has a bump, essentially a bump on his back. And what happened was at some point when his spine was forming with the spinal cord came out, or was out and then it attached itself to that bump. Mm -hmm. So it's tethered. It is not the kind of spina bifida that can be prevented by taking folic acid. It's six times more rare. This condition is called a lipomyelomeningocele. Mm -hmm. And it's a condition where a child is born with um, the cord, this is the spinal cord being lower than it's supposed to be, and connected to fat. The only treatment for this is surgery, the extremely delicate untethering of the fragile spinal cord so that as he grows, his spinal column can grow with him and not cause potentially dangerous side effects. That means acting quickly, Marcus is now seven months old and ready for surgery. This will allow us to do two things. One is to remove as much of the fat as possible to make it as cosmetically appealing so he could lie on his back. And the second part is to release the tether cord. And new technology makes that easier for Dr. Vasiliadi to navigate when the fibers are so fragile. This allows things to be done faster and in many more modalities. We'll see that technology in action in the operating room, but first... So you could squeeze my finger quite well. Look at him, he's quite happy. A final checkup. He's probably a little tender being on his back because of the mass, so mom's very careful on keeping him on his side. Just three weeks later, that day has come. Marcus is hungry because he can't eat before surgery. He doesn't understand that, of course. And now Hannah's fear is finally playing out. I feel scared. I feel like out of control. I had to hand him over. Marcus, he's on his own now on his own in the operating room. A tiny little person. He's barely begun his life, and on this day, a life-changing surgery. At risk, function in his lower legs. If his legs get affected, it's from the knees down. He could get loss of feeling, um, things like club feet. The neurophysiologist is setting up that monitor the piece of technology that now allows a surgeon to know exactly where to cut and where not to. To be sure that he's not dissecting into a nerve, he is using this neurophysiology instrumentation to stimulate the phylum. And if the stimulus goes and excites the nerve tissue, it would evoke a response on my monitor here. And I would alert him that, yes, I got a response from a muzzle. Now it is active. Twelve days since major back surgery, and look at Marcus now. Hey, Marcus, how you doing? Marcus yeah, is doing happy. remarkably well. As you can see there's a little bit of residual swelling, which is very normal, and that will continue to come down. But what about his lower body function and those fragile nerves that technology was aiming to protect? Oh, very nice reflex. Look at that, eh? Excellent reflex over here. Very, very, very nice reflex. And we'll see how things go with his ambulation, with his walking. It's too early to tell right now. But so far from what we're seeing, we're seeing the best possible outcome that he could, that he could have. I think we're blessed. He's the happiest baby ever.